Manchester United 2, Everton 0. Three points at Old Trafford in the lunchtime kickoff. KG, you're there bobbing your head. How are you feeling coming out of that one? I feel great. I feel great. No, I'm playing. Um, I feel wicked, man. Today was a great result. We needed that Man United, um, you know, to say, can we do it without Casemiro? We finally ended that. Um, not saying ended that drought because away we need to win with Casemiro and stuff like that. But yeah. that's another issue for another time. But again, Man United showed up today. Everton fighting for their lives. Relegate. You don't want to play these sides that are in relegation battles. They're going to give it all. They're going to give it everything. But Man United was in full control. You know, that first half was real, a real controlled half. And players, I always talk about passengers and players not being involved. Today, you can't say there's a passenger. McTominay, big game. Sabitza, big game. Bruno, big game. You know, there's all those guys. And that's the midfield department. But what I liked about today was we bypassed the midfield a bit and we didn't waste time just playing between there. We said, you know what? Hit it long. There's, there's, they're open. We, we found the weakness and we exploited it. Man, did we exploit it, but we just didn't have our shooting boots. Yeah, exactly. And to your point, it was Scott McTominay who actually broke the deadlock, probably the name you wouldn't expect. Just how actually good was he today? I mean, we've criticised him a lot recently, questioning whether he's good enough. But is this the kind of game for him? Is it these kind of games, the kind of midfield battle games? No, because if I had someone else, he'd be in, right? But I do like like these guys off the bench. I don't know if Scott is one of those players that you say, you know, with rhythm, he could come in and be a force and this, that, and the other. Just obviously, I want our team to go to the next level. So I won't go crazy with the Scott uh, McTominay praise. But I can say that today, he was what he needed to do. Very physical, very tough in there, and a lot for them to deal with. You say these are Sean Dyke side, that's a chip of the old block. Sean Dyke would love him in his team mm. to be in there, like, battling again. He, there was a lot of tackles that people should have been yellow-carded. He's been clattered quite a few times. N never complained, got up, carried on running for the team. So that's one of the things that you can say, you know, has worked. And I think Sabitza finding his form. And it's, it's, yeah. it's harsh for him because he has to now adapt again. Now, the return of Ericsson... What does that mean for minutes? Luckily, Sibitz has found his form now. He's been he's been quite he's been really good actually. If I'm being fair to Sibitz, really smart, very intelligent player. You know, um, it not like we wondered about him, but it was like, have you added enough yet since you've been here? What have you added? And again, he's been unfortunate because of injuries and this that and the other. He hasn't been able to play his true position. But now we're starting to see the team kind of playing through him, trying to. Understand using his strengths, using what he does well, we're starting to see our team like really understand Sabitzer's game. You know, just you you know he's gonna shoot on the volley. Even the other day, I think we played a game and Rashford gave up the free kick for him. So clearly he's showing who he is in training, and it's yeah. starting to show because he has to play. Talk to me about Bruno Fernandes as well. The last few games, he's played in a bit of a deeper role. And in particular in that first half, and it's going to be interesting to see if he sticks in this role now that Ericsson's back, but he was really dictating the tempo, cross-field passes. The only thing, again, like many people that he didn't do today was score, but he was brilliant. Yeah, you know what? Again, for the people that say he can't play deep. Rubbish! I mean, what was even that? It's rubbish. End of the day, you know, he can. You know, like, we've seen him. They've done it. For, he's done it for Portugal. It just, when it goes bad, it goes really bad. It's almost like that that goalkeeper. If a goalkeeper has a bad day, goes a lot of goals have gone in. You know, he's just, he's made a man, tapped into his own into his own box, into his own goal, right? And Bruno, where when he does have these mistakes, he is picked up you know, losing it in our final third. You can't afford to, you can't compensate for moments like that. But today he was so involved. Then like spraying 30 yard, 30 yard, 40 yard balls. And then again to where they need to get to. It's a shame that he doesn't get his goal because the ball comes to him. He could have killed off the game dead, you know, but he goes for a head up. But I'm, I like seeing Bruno in this position. You want Bruno involved in the game and you want, even with the, I just want the education of the players to, no one to sit back and let Bruno go for because we saw in gate in, in today's game why he stayed deep. There were times that he'd arrive in the box and he'd be there, and that's what you kind of want from Bruno. You just want him to be affecting the game in a positive way, you know. And today I will say that he was economical with the ball, not too much, and even times where the team needed to just relax because it was a time when it was we're playing a bit. It became like pinball. Second half, 
um, Sean Dyche spoke to those players and they didn't give us as much space as they gave us before. And it, it became a time where, not like Man United holding on, but Man United not in control as they once were. And I think there was moments where Bruno had to be, you know, a bit of a leader and just remind the players, look, calm down, everybody. We move again. Recycle. Let's go. Jane Sancho as well. Um, we had spoke at the beginning of the match for you about expectations and how he's been doing and where do we think he can get to. Have we seen in particular today, again, how effective he can be for us and the type of game and system that works for him? Again, not so much more traditional wing play, but that more sort of intricate passing, heavy possession style. Does that favour Sancho more, do you think, going forward? We need we need a bit more. What we do need... Today was great. Today was good from Sancho. I don't want to say great, but today was very good, right? He's getting to them stages where he's having very good games where Anthony is the first person to come off and Sancho still being on the pitch. That says a lot because Sancho will be the first one. As soon as the um, the numbers go up on the sidelines, Sancho's already looking up like, ah, oh, they got my number. He ain't even looking over there anymore, which is now um, progressive. It means that he's obviously earned the trust of the manager. And the, I think there's a, just a favour between the two of them happening, but I'm seeing a lot more running from Sancho. I'm seeing a lot more um, trying things and trying to be more involved in the game. This is the Sancho that I've been looking for. And I still think there's a higher ceiling for a player like him. I still believe that there's more they can offer to Man United. We haven't seen the best of Sancho yet, but it's getting better. Um, now, with um, with at the moment, with Rashid not being in the team, you expect Sancho to push on again, you know, and and to like, if in the Sevilla game, I would like a front three of Anthony, um, Sancho and Martial. I'd like to see that as a starting. That's what I I want Man United to continue trying to play this brand of football where runs in behind, really just, again, high tempo, high where you, it's hard to remember where these players are, pick these players up. I mean, Anthony Martial as well, he gets the second goal for us today. Rashford, we don't know what his injury state is. It, it's the status as he came off. Um, if Martial can stay fit, if he can stay fit, how important can he be for the remainder of the season, do you think? Super, it'll be invaluable. You can see what you can see what the team needs to be like. You know, and this team, what 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 you learn about this team today is how desperate we need a centre forward next season. It's clear, like it's it's ever so just there, and it's it's glaring now that you want someone that is going to run in behind, someone that's going to be a problem to deal with, and it gives the space for the create. We got so many creative players, right? So uh, a player like a Marshall right now. I imagine that if he stays fit, as key as ever, like as key as Casemiro almost, where it's like we need we need a forward. We need a striker. And uh, finally, before we wrap things up, with today's result and given some of our rivals who they're playing this weekend, how are you feeling about top four? I've always felt good about top four. I, you know, when I spoke to um, <laughs> Fleck, I was like, I, I feel good about our team is... With the kind of manager that we have, he won't allow us to capitulate in that way. He just won't allow it. He 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 demands standards. You heard him say the new one was he wants robots. Like yeah. he's not allowing no emotion. That, no emotion. Like I don't care about what you what you're going through, big man. We got a job to do. So when people thought like there'll be a huge slump and the teams that we're going up against, yes, they're challenging. But if Man United focus on themselves, do what they need to do and follow the tactics that Ten Hag has set, we'll get over the line. I truly believe that. There you go. We'll get over the line. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to smash a like on the like button and subscribe. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>